Hello, everyone. Um, one of the things that we've done recently and are about to roll out in uh, the next week or so is support for stateful ingestion. And um, it really improves our ability to uh, not unnecessarily ingest old stuff again and again. And it improves the uh, capabilities of uh, new ingestion connectors um, to, to essentially only pull relevant information every time they run. So let's get into it. Um, the uh, next slide. So let's let's start with an example of uh, a connector that we already have. It's called the Snowflake Usage Source, and let's look at how it works today. You know, the Snowflake Usage store, Source um, starts up, and it's got in its configuration uh, a variable called start time. And that start time can be specified in your configuration. Um, so you can say start time is yesterday or start time is day before yesterday. And depending on what you specify, the Snowflake usage connector says, okay, I'm gonna start from this time and pull all <laughs> usage logs from this start time up to a granularity. And the default granularity is one day. So essentially what the Snowflake usage connector is doing, every time it starts up, it pulls a window of data from the source. And that window is defined by the start time parameter. Now the start time can be specified in config, or if you don't specify it, the default source will just default it to now minus one day. So essentially it'll pull data for the previous day. Once it does all of that, it does aggregations in memory and then pushes a group, uh, usage stats grouped by data set and bucketed by this day granularity into data hub. And that powers a bunch of features. Uh, if you go to the Data Hub demo, you'll see monthly queries, you'll see top users, you'll also see column level stats and recent queries. All of that information is coming in from this usage source. And there, there, there are other usage sources like the BigQuery usage source, and now we have the Redshift usage source that are basically built the same way. So what's the problem? Next slide. First, the start time needs to be set as configurations, which makes it kind of interesting. Like, what do you set it to? Do you set it to today? Do you set it to yesterday? Um, you basically have to set it using kind of your scheduler. So people have to use something like Airflow to really ensure that this runs every day and you know, does not rerun twice the same day. Um, so if you rerun today's job twice, you know, the, the ingestion connector is stateless and it just says, okay, I guess I'll pull data for today again. And this is not just a problem for the usage source, pretty much every single source today is memory less, which means it starts up and crawls the whole world and ingests metadata. So we wanted to facilitate sources to remember where they last left off to allow for incremental ingestion so that we can reduce load on source systems and only produce relevant changes. Of course, when sources are pushing metadata out, this is all trivial because you're right in the context of actually making a change so you can push metadata out when it changes. But for sources that are crawled, you actually need state to be able to ingest only the things that have changed. We also want these sources to be really simple self-healing cron jobs. You should be able to just run them and they should be just able to figure out where they last left off and only pull the deltas. So how did we do it? Well, we thought about where we could store this state. The next slide. What were the requirements? Well, first we need temporal storage. So we need state to remember across time. And second, we want to be able to query that state to get the last successful run for a particular window of time. And of course, there are a few options for storing this state. You could either store it in your local file system, or you could store it in S3 or some other blob store, or you could store it in a DB, or you could store it in Data Hub. And we were like, huh, that's interesting. Maybe we can actually use Data Hub as a state store for ingestion. And let's look at what that looks like. So what we ended up building is just leveraging the same time series metadata support that we added to Data Hub to actually store state about metadata ingestion runs. If that's not meta enough for you, I don't know what is. Um, so here's an example of how the Snowflake usage ingestion system changes once we add this capability. The first thing it does when it starts up is gets the last successful run state from Data Hub. And Data Hub internally 
has temporal state for all of the previous runs. Once it figures out the start time based on the last successful run state, it then issues the query to Snowflake, gets the deltas, does the same thing, groups use its stats, sends it over to Data Hub. But in addition to all the metadata it produces, it also produces another piece of metadata, which is the ingestion run state. And that includes things like the run ID, the pipeline ID, the status, how long it took, other metrics, as well as the start time and the granularity. So that's basically the window. And each of these individual ingestion run events are really getting logged in Data Hub on a timeline, which allows the usage connector the next time it runs to find out the last successful run and carry off from there. So that's um, in a nutshell what we've done and it's uh, working out quite well. Uh, next slide. We, uh, Surya is gonna do a quick demo for you here. Um, and just before he gets started, I wanna give you an example of what we will be demoing. So today is September 24th in UTC time. And you know we wanted to uh, show you what it would look like if ingestion was run two days ago and then rerun, and then we move time forward to now and then run ingestion again. So we want to basically show how uh, ingestion runs would progress over time using a connector that from a configuration perspective is completely stateless. Over to you, Surya. Okay, sharing my screen. So for this demo, we have done something very interesting. So we have uh, set up basically a Docker that can fake time with the library. So if you want to see what it looks like, so before we do the ingestion two days ago, so if I just ask like this, what's the date? It says today is September 22nd. So if I ask uh, minus three, what is it? It's 21st. So it's actually changing system time, basically. So now let's go ahead and do an ingestion. So that's two days ago. Okay, so from Snowflake. So this is now going to complain about some clock skew. So but that's okay to still go ahead and finish it. Let's get started. This is complaining that it has detected clock skew. Potential clock here, right here. Okay. Now it's ingesting basically these records. So we have 48 work units produced. So now if I try to rerun basically for the same day, again. So it, it shouldn't allow us to basically uh, do it. It should produce zero work units. Okay, done. So it has remembered what it did before for this day. Now uh, we can actually- Oh yeah, it might be a good idea to just look at that uh, recipe quickly, the oh, yeah. usage.yaml. So, uh, so uh, okay, the only thing basically from here that will survive is this. So the only additional basically uh, piece of information this suite needs is uh, basically where the GMS server is. So that's where time stats live in order to query these aggregations are like uh, even push. So this is the endpoint we need. So the other configuration is going to go away. So yeah, so this is what it is. One thing that's interesting for you to notice is that like there is no time specified anywhere here. So uh, now if we basically go back to the demo and run for today, you will notice that it'll run for today basically. So it will do addition again of this records. So now let's get rid of this altogether. So, and this is now if I show you what uh, current time looks like. So without this date is basically today. So we are actually kicking off the ingestion for today. So which means it's supposed to basically fetch uh, all the data uh, for yesterday, all of yesterday. So okay. 
So here we go. So it's now, if you notice, this is the entire data basically from the start of yesterday. So 23rd. So, and we again got 48 records. Now, if we try to basically rerun the same thing, it shouldn't allow us to, it, it shouldn't produce any records. So, done. There's nothing. Back to you, Sir Shankar. So, yeah, maybe you want to use the, <clears throat> so this is uh, pretty cool, but what is even cooler, I think, is what you see in the UI after you run. Ah, okay. Where is the UI? I didn't expect you to ask for this. So let me pull uh, it up. So any um, questions so far? <clears throat> Yeah, okay. So let's go see pipelines. So get a hub ingest. There's a pipeline here. So Right, so what is interesting I think is that even the data hub ingestion itself will um, produce a pipeline instance, um, which will allow us then to look at the ingestion process itself as a pipeline that runs and produces metadata. So now you'll be able to actually not only look at your data pipelines and your uh, data sets and the lineage across all of them, but also your metadata pipelines and make sure that they are running on time and that they are actually running uh, successfully. So it allows us to use Data Hub itself as an observability um, platform for metadata ingestion. Cool. So Maggie, I think we can go back to the slide deck. So this will get rolled out um, to uh, all the use it sources. So Snowflake, BigQuery and Redshift. <clears throat> Another uh, thing that we want to roll it out to is the dataset profiling sources. These tend to be our most expensive uh, profiling uh, sources and we want to uh, start doing incremental profiling as well and also start converting other sources such as our SQL sources that are ingesting schemas, our looker sources to be stateful and only perform incremental pulls. This will reduce your API builds as well as uh, reduce the time that it takes for these sources to run. 